Welcome back to the shop. I am so close to the finish line as you can see here with the CB. She is looking really, really sharp. I've got my uh, navigation lights. I have ailerons. I have flaps. I have landing gear. I have struts. I have very few things left to cover on this build, but I want to go over what I have done in the meantime since we have spoken last. Um, first and foremost, the wing has been covered with fiberglass. It has been filled with my uh, filler stuff with the micro balloons and water-based polyurethane. Sanded, primed, sanded, uh, looks pretty good and then threw some paint on it and that includes the ailerons and the flaps as well uh, Obviously, I had to go through and cut the ailerons and flaps free. There was some post-processing there I had to do some sanding and trimming not a huge deal. It's just it comes with the territory um, And then on top of that I had to go through and create all the wiring uh, just double check all of that. And it's a good thing that I did double check all of it because there was one uh, Y harness that I had, um, I, I had put the wrong pin in the, in the connector. So <laughs> when you make your own connectors, it's something you got to watch out for. Uh, anyway, so at this point, we are looking really, really good. I've got the tail propped up here, but I want to take a minute and flip the airplane over and go over some of the hardware that I've used. All right, so here we are. We have uh, the landing light with the lens cover. The lens cover is, honestly, it's a piece of orange juice bottle. That's it. I had an orange juice bottle and I cut off a flat piece and then I uh, held it in place while I heated up with a hairdryer and it got it to a rough shape. Wasn't wasn't entirely happy with it and then used a heat gun to get it to soften even more and it went the rest of the way and that's all that is held on with canopy glue formula 560 same stuff we always use so no big deal there uh yeah so these navigation lights i stole off of a fly zone to Haviland beaver and they really just work perfect for what we're doing here absolutely perfect and i have all these servos these are just the metal gear nine gram servos you can get off of the uh the jungle store online and they you know they're honestly good enough they have plenty of torque they are not terribly heavy and honestly they come apart really easy too the reason i had to take them apart <laughs> is because i had to waterproof them uh, to do that i'm using corrosion x there Corrosion X. It's just a spray. It smells terrible. Uh, I do it over my trash can, my shop trash can here, uh, just to get any of the overspray and drippings and stuff in it. That way you can take it away and it, it just smells terrible. Uh, I mean, it's not like it's a lot of fumes or anything. It doesn't really stink up the whole shop. It's just when, it's, when you spray it out, it just it doesn't smell pleasant. It's what I'm trying to say. So sprayed that all over the electronic part on the inside of the servo. Once that is done and dried after a couple hours, I test the servo, make sure it works, it didn't do it wrong. And then additionally, as I've mentioned before, there is a neoprene O-ring in between. Let's see, is there any good light in here? Good heavens, hard to see. Uh, maybe. Anyway, there is a neoprene O-ring in here that is greased up that creates a seal between the servo horn and the servo itself. Now, on some servos, like the full-size Futaba servos, there is a gap there that is big enough that it, there, it's not much of an issue. But here, I did notice that it started to squish the ring a little bit. And when I did tighten it down all the way with my servo tester, it didn't want to entirely move smoothly so these are loosened and because there's a metal spline in here i put just a drop of blue loctite blue loctite blue loctite okay if you ever have to service these you want to make sure that you can remove the screw <laughs> red loctite no bueno 
Okay, take the blue Loctite seriously here, guys, uh, if you're gonna do this. It's a little bit of precaution, a little bit of extra expense. I've got it in my drawer. I use it all the time anyway for other things. So just buy some, have it in your drawer, and use it when you build. Other than that, we've got the standard servo worms that come with it, but I went ahead and I went into my stash, my drawer stash, and I found a bunch of leftover stuff. And honestly, this was all leftover from other crashed airplanes and other projects. So the, uh, the T-Style, Horns, those are new, uh, brand new, uh, out of package from Dubro. And then this is an older style uh, from another model, uh, Clevis. Uh, what are these called? Uh, Lynx. Uh, I mean, these are these are the like the quick links. These are the Dubro style. But it's pretty much the same thing over here. You've got a locking nut. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's not going to rotate because I've got a Z-Bend, but I just left it on there because I did use the piece of fuel tubing that came on it. I'm going to get some fuel tubing on this one because I think that's a good idea. These are just for flaps. I don't think it's as critical on flaps because it's not like you're using them. And if you lose a flap, it's not controlling the airplane. It's just going to you know, be extra drag anyway. So definitely have it on the ailerons first. Um, these are 256 size threads, not the 440. So not going overkill here with strength. Uh, but yeah, I had four of them in my drawer. And so I used all four of them. But it was nice to have the Dubro parts available. And of course, they're available at Dubro.com. And use link Josh10 for 10% off your cart. Cool. What else? Oh yeah, KS Metals. K and S Precision Metals. Uh, we've got the struts here. These are aluminum airfoiled struts. But uh, I also have these electrical ring terminals. Okay, so I use the electrical ring terminal on uh, some music wire, some 332nd music wire. The reason that I did that was because I want these to have some sort of flex, okay? I don't want it to be super rigid. And so the main stress member is actually not the aluminum. It is the spring steel on the inside that connects these two. I did solder each end of the electrical ring terminals so that that is a very rigid uh, connection, but I need to cut that bolt obviously. Uh, but what I did to connect the, uh, the, the tubing, the KNS precision airfoil tube stuff here that is so awesome that I don't have to work. What I did was I used Gorilla Glue. Uh, you can see a little bit there. I've got a picture I'll put up here. So I just put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on the inside and let it foam out. And let me tell you, it's not going to let water in. And it is, let me just look, I'm trying to rotate this here. I'm trying to. There's a little tiny bit of give. And that's really all we want. It, it's there to hold it in place. If it breaks free, breaks free. I can re-glue it with more Gorilla Glue. That's the point. Uh, and I left it, I'm leaving it aluminum so that if I do have to re-glue it, I don't have to worry about paint. Uh, and I'm not polishing it because I don't want the metal to stand out, if that makes sense. I want the paint to shine through here. Uh, and we'll talk on that in a minute. But yeah, I've got that done on both sides. And you'll also notice that there's a hole here. Why is there a hole here? Well, there are really good questions and then there are obvious questions. There are tip pontoons that I've had to make. And these are nearing completion. Uh, I'm using the same technique here with music wire uh, with, the, uh, with the extruded aluminum here. Come on, focus, folks, focus. And what I have done is uh, the, the plans call for paper to be wrapped around to give this sort of step buildup. And uh, rather than use paper, I was like, you know what? I can just use shrink tubing. Easy, right? Why not? It'll take paint, right? Sure. So yeah, that's, that's the point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray paint this whole schmear uh, because everything is really firmly glued on this point, uh, because uh, 
these I had to glue. There's a inside. There's a piece of bent uh, music wire, and then there is a balsa sheet of the side profile that I notched in for that, so that the rotation is going to be secure because you don't want these to rotate because that's going to screw up with your steering if you end up using those. So yeah, there that, and then I use foam on the outside, uh, just using some of this stuff. This is a three quarter inch, but I needed one inch. I had a little bit of one inch left. So that's what I did because uh, one inch here and one inch here and then shape uh, per the plans. There is no top or bottom bottom view on the plans. So I just kind of eyeballed it. I've done enough foam sculpting in the past that I felt really comfortable doing that. If this were balsa, I would have been a little bit more cautious, but I don't think it would be unreasonable. I would have shaped it the way that the plans called for it and been like, this is looking really weird. I wish there was a top view, but there isn't. So artistic liberty. <laughs> Uh, so after the foam cured out and shaped it, I just have smeared uh, the spackle all over this stuff. I'm going to sand it all down. These are just drying right now. They're mostly dried to the touch, but they need to dry out a little bit more before I do final sanding. I will glass them and I will do a couple layers of the water-based polyurethane sanding sealer. That stuff right there. And then uh, sand it prime it, sand it again, and be done with it. Uh, that Those will plug in here. There will be a uh, additional hole for a screw that will go in there, just like this. Now here I'll point out that I do have a washer with a rubber grommet that is bonded to it. You can pick up these. Uh, I, I know that I have them at my uh, local Lowe's hardware store. Uh, but most people, I think, in the hobby get them from RTL fasteners. That's where I got these. So if you head to RTL fasteners, you can pick them up there. Uh, if you can't find them at your local Lowe's. But I, I know I've seen them at Lowe's and I've purchased them before at Lowe's. But they may not have the sizes that you might need. Uh, so that's where you can get those. But the rubber is there to help keep water out of the hole. <laughs> We don't want water in the boat. Uh, so that's that's the whole point, is to keep water out of the boat. All right, so until next time, I have to finish these pontoons and then I will start with the engine cowling. That is what is left. And after I have the engine cowling up, you know, I'll probably do it before, but uh, take a look at the center of gravity. Um, and then I ordered a whole bunch of weights I ordered some tire weights uh, so that I can stick them on there. Normally I have this lead shot that I like to mix up with Gorilla Glue and stick it wherever I want. But with, with the stick on tire weights, it'll just be easier to stick it up in the nose and then just like forget about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, it was 23 bucks off of the jungle store. Not bad. Um, so yeah, thanks guys. Uh, can't wait to see you next time. I got to keep rolling. Got to keep rolling. Uh, I'm in a really good place. It's closing up on the, uh, the end of September and I should have this done very shortly. Should have this on water very, very shortly. All right, guys. So until next time, keep working on your flying works of art.